So this video is going to focus on what we call the Bohr model uh, and how this is going to pertain to our trends that we have on the periodic table. So uh, at this point in time, science is kind of new uh, from Rutherford's experiment that we had a, a small dense nucleus and then the electrons were somewhere around that nucleus. So what Bohr added to the mix essentially or added to the theory or the model is that electrons exist in energy levels. So Bohr was able to kind of figure out that these electrons had some kind of energy um, component to them. And so he thought they were in different levels. He thought that the electrons essentially orbited the nucleus. So it's sometimes called the planetary model because uh, again, they were uh, at the same time, uh, they had some knowledge of our um, solar system and the planets orbiting the sun. Uh, so they call it the planetary model. So what I'm gonna show you is a couple examples of different elements in the Bohr model. And so you need some kind of periodic table if it's this one or the Flynn periodic table. But I'm gonna start with hydrogen. And what you wanna do is draw a center circle uh, with protons and neutrons, and then do some circles outside of that, okay? So these circles are going to represent essentially um, what we call the energy levels, the energy levels that we have around the atom. Okay. So if I take um, this example here, I take this example here, I could say that um, this is the nucleus. So I know I have one proton and let's say it has one neutron. And let's say this is energy level one, this is energy level two, this is energy level three. So energy levels are gonna be labeled N, okay? And the one uh, smaller numbers are always going to be ones that are closer to the nucleus. So energy level one is closer to the nucleus, energy level two, energy level three, so on and so forth. So these are the energy levels that the electrons are gonna exist in. So uh, um, hydrogen has one electron. So I'm gonna put one electron in the first energy level. But if you maybe remember this from middle school, there's a different amount of uh, electrons that you can put in each energy level. So energy level one, you could have two electrons in them. Energy level two, you could have a total of eight electrons in it. And then third energy level is gonna be something we discussed. So again, if this kind of clicks with you, um, we're actually gonna get into why that is. So we have protons and then we have electrons around it. So again, we're going to use this kind of as our model uh, going forward. Okay, so I'm gonna draw another set of circles. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip this over and we're gonna do another element. We're gonna do another element so that you can see um, kind of a pattern that develops. Uh, so let's do nitrogen, let's do nitrogen. So if you look at uh, nitrogen on the periodic table, it has a seven associated with it. Seven means it has seven protons. And again, let's say it has seven neutrons and that's not going to be relevant to our discussion. So nitrogen has, um, going to, we're going to say it has seven um, electrons as well. So we have energy level one, energy level two, energy level three. So I'm gonna put two electrons in energy level one. So that's going to be two electrons that we have uh, in the um, first energy level. Then we're going to have five more electrons. So I'm gonna put them around one, two, three, four, five, okay. So I now have two electrons in nitrogen and I have five, excuse me, two in the first energy level and five in the second energy level. So I have a total of seven electrons in that atom, okay? So as I get more and more electrons, I'm going to start to involve more and more of the energy levels, okay? So let me show you where this is going. So I'm gonna do another one which is sodium. So again, with these videos, if you need to like stop and pause while you're drawing these circles, and again, they don't have to be perfect. Sodium has a total of 11 electrons, okay? Sodium has a total of 11 electrons. So again, energy level one, we could put two electrons in there and we will all discover why that is. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could total of eight electrons in energy level two. And then I have one electron in energy level three. Okay, one electron in energy level three. So what scientists started to figure out was if these electrons exist in these energy levels, why does sodium per chance, when it makes an ion, why does it become a plus one? Meaning it loses one electron. Okay, so why does that happen? Well, if you think of it as these energy levels, there seems to be a maximum amount of electrons in these energy levels. But in this case, sodium has one electron in this outermost energy level of three. So it seems kind of logical that that electron would be the one that would leave when you are trying to make the ion. It doesn't want to make take away more electrons because then you're starting to take away from what we call a filled energy state. So this should start to explain why is the sodium, why is everything in that first column, why do they like to lose one electron, okay? So that's gonna give you some background information. All right, so let's go over to, um, let's look at something like, fluorine, okay? So fluorine is number nine. Okay, fluorine is number nine. So fluorine. So it's nine electrons. Again, nine protons, nine neutrons. Again, that's irrelevant to what we're talking about. So we have two electrons in the first energy level. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the second energy level. Okay, so like I said, the second energy level could have a total of eight electrons in there. So if that's the case, what does fluorine like to do when it becomes an ion? Well, fluorine is a halogen and this column here typically has a negative one charge when it becomes an ion. So fluorine has a negative one. So it's going to gain one electron. It's gonna gain one electron when it becomes an ion. So where is that electron going to go? Well, it's going to go here in that second energy level to essentially fill it up with eight electrons in the second energy level. So we started to see with this Bohr model exactly how many electrons can go into each energy level and where the charge on the ion happens to go. 